first level is to ask, who am I? Why am I here? What's my goal in life? You know how many people don't bother to discuss that? You see them doing the dumbest things, using the foulest language, languages. You find them running for the most mundane material things in life. You're looking at them like, are you serious? You really? Yeah, my dream is to have that. And I'll kill to have it. I said, that's it? That's your dream? That's what you've concluded? Your purpose in this short world that you're living in? This short life? You know how short this life is? If you're 90 years of age, which is a long period, 90, 90 years later, this is an old person. 30 years of the 90 years, the person was sleeping. You're left with 60. 30 of those 60, you were busy working. You're left with 30 years. If you and I live to be 90, most people don't live to be 90. The average lifespan is 70. So bring it down to 20 years. You mean, I pursued all these dreams for 20 years and if I ask you for that 20 years give me a videotape of what is your most profound moments in life maybe a hundred hours 200 hours you mean this world was only worth 200 hours for me Allah says yeah but تؤثرون الحيات الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى you love this world. The hereafter is what's forever. You are fooling yourselves into thinking something's important here. But when a person needs to sit down and say, yes, what's, what, why am I here? You know, I speak in universities. I, I get non-Muslim audiences. After my lecture, you see youth come to me. I said, wow, never thought this way. You're right. I said, look, I'm not here to proselytize. I'm not here to make you a Muslim. I'm here to wake you up. You choose your own way. You're smart enough. You are sharp enough. You know. You've been planted with some of the greatest gifts you can ever imagine. And I'm here to strike them. And you strike me too. Let's wake each other up. There's a purpose in this life. The guy says to me, you're right. I say, take account. Look in the skies. What's all this for? Why is all this happening? What, what is all this science? Why, why do people behave the way they do? Observation, basic observation will lead us to so much understanding. That's why the Prophet says, Man arafa nafsa, faqad arafa rabba. The one who knows himself will know his Lord. Indeed, that's first. ayati. Purified you. Brothers and sisters, please, for the love of Allah, keep away from wrong and haram. Even if you're not sure if something is haram, and you have a general knowledge that people are saying this is bad, and you don't know, it is wiser to avoid it until you know. What if they are right? But then you're already infected with it. You're already submerged in it. How are you gonna get out? You might say, well, I don't know if something's haram and halal. Okay, then let me be cautionary. Then shaitan is whispering in our ears, yeah, but then you're gonna become fanatical. Then you can't do anything. You're gonna be stuck in your house. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, stop. How much has Allah forbidden us? compared to what he has allowed us. Put it on the scale. You can't. What is allowed is too great. Focus on what is allowed. Don't make a big deal about what is forbidden. And when Allah forbids you something truly, like in the Quran, alcohol, drugs, pork, gambling, these are not Allah giving me these laws to entertain me or to make my life difficult. It is clear by any standards, even an alcoholic will tell you, that it is destructive. A gambler will tell you it is destructive. Period. It's that simple. And when Allah says, keep away from it, it is for my benefit. At the end of the day, why do I need religion otherwise? I can be an atheist and just live just as well. Allah says, I have sent you morals as your best role model, the Prophet and his family, so that you follow the best morals, so you are the best in the community. That's what it's all about. You see? So will you zaki him, purify you, you notice the power of purification. You and I may ask, look, God is everywhere. He's ubiquitous. He's ever present. What is to take me to go and do wudu? I mean, Allah already knows what's in my heart. I mean, why do I have to wipe my hand or my arms and, you know, wipe my head? I mean, God, what is this wiping for? You know, I, you already know what's in my heart. It's even deeper than my skin. Why do I need to clean my skin to come to you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that my religion as a symbol of your action is when you come to me, you purify. As pure as your heart may be. Look at our blessed Imam. Imam Zainul Abidin When he used to do wudu, people used to see him turn pale and shivering. 
They say, Yabna Rasulillah, why are you so pale? He says, I am preparing to go and talk to the owner of the universe. Do you know who that is? Should I not be pale? Imagine if you and I are getting ready to go and speak to the most powerful human being in the world, a king or a president or, or let's say a great scholar that you and I admire just to see their faces. We admire them. Would you not be prepared? Would you not wonder what am I going to say? How am I going to dress? How am I going to sit? The Imam says, Allah is so merciful. He's allowed me access to him at all times. But five times he's made it obligatory to speak to him.